Okay, in this next lecture, we're going to be spending some time talking about the components of a cell or what is actually inside of your cells. And hopefully from last time, you remember that um, prokaryotic cells like archaea and bacteria disappeared for a second. Prokaryotic cells like archaea and bacteria do not have membrane-bound organelles, whereas eukaryotic cells, things like me and you, or houseplant, or your dog, or your cat, or a tree, or most things actually out there, um, do have membrane-bound organelles. I guess I should be careful. I shouldn't say most things, because there are more bacteria than there are. Uh, there, there are more archaea. There are more prokaryotic cells than there are eukaryotic cells in the universe. Um, but everything that you can see that's alive without the aid of a microscope is um, eukaryotic. Which is not to say there are certainly microscopic things which are also eukaryotic. But the things that you're familiar with that are alive are all eukaryotic. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, Prokaryotic cells do not have membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotic cells do have membrane-bound organelles. But what we're looking at here, and the thing that all cells have, is a plasma membrane. All cells have this plasma membrane. And it's pretty complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, It has these, uh, these pro proteins that are embedded within, within its surface, which are going to help the cell to interact with different things. Sometimes they're going to help the cell bring in certain components or export certain components, maybe bring in food and get rid of waste. It also has glycoproteins, okay, which is, um, as the name would imply, a carbohydrate from the glyco part and protein from the protein part embedded within um, its cell membrane. Glycolipids, which again, glyco, like, gly um, like glucose, implying... Um, carbohydrate, glycolipid, carbohydrate, lipid. Um, it has some cholesterol embedded within it. Okay, so these cell membranes have a lot of stuff going on within them. Um, and the most important thing, though, to kind of know about one of these cell membranes is that they are a phospholipid bilayer. Okay, and what that means is you have these, these phosphate groups here. These are all hydrophilic. These love water. And then you have these lipid tails, these fatty acid tails, which hate water. They, they are hydrophobic. Okay, and I'll tell you, there's liquidy stuff, aqueous stuff, as chemists will say. There's watery stuff out here, and there's watery stuff in here. So it should make some sense to you that the part that hates water is sort of turned away from that and is almost being protected by this hydrophilic layer here. So the hydrophobic things, they turn away from the water, they, they try to hide, okay, they hate water, okay. The fatty acid tails are on the inside, and then you have this phosph or this phosphate layer outside, okay. And it's called a bilayer because there are two layers, right. Here's, here's some phosphate heads with fatty acid tails in here, and here are some phosphate heads with fatty acid tails out here. By the way, this is the internal part to the cell is down on the bottom. Here's the external part to the cell out here, okay? And so this, you just imagine this layer covering up the entirety of the cell, okay? Um, so yeah, you should know that this is a phospholipid bilayer. Part of it is hydrophobic, part of it is hydrophilic. Um, and you should know that there's some like stuff embedded within this. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about are microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. Those things compose uh, a cell's, what's called a cell's cytoskeleton. Okay, if you take all of the organelles out of a cell, you are left with just cytoskeleton. Okay, and you, you have other stuff too, still left in here, but if you took everything else out of the cell, you're still going to have um, a cytoskeleton. Okay, there are microfilaments, which are the smallest ones, intermediate filaments, which are intermediate in size, and microtubules, which are sort of like the next largest one. I kind of wish they'd call them like macrotubules or something, but that's okay. So microfilaments are the thinnest ones, and they have to do with moving stuff around within the cell. When we get to the um, 
cellular division chapter later on, these things are going to be very important. Okay. Um, they, they also help with muscle contraction. Um, let's see what else. I think that's enough for now. So microfilaments move stuff in the cell are involved in muscle contraction. Intermediate filaments um, help to maintain the shape to the cell and help to keep organelles sort of in the same spot. Um, yeah, I think that's enough for intermediate filaments. Microtubules are the thickest ones, as I said earlier, even though they're still called micro, they're microtubules instead of microfilaments. Um, and these have to do with um, moving chromosomes during cell division, which is going to be super important. So we'll, we'll come back. We'll be talking about these later. I mostly just want you to know that there is a cytoskeleton and there are three elements in there, intermediate filaments, uh, microfilaments, and microtubules. Um, probably won't ask you about specific functions just yet, but when we get to the chapter on cell division, that's when I'll ask you. Oh, and here is a, a summary of all of that stuff I just said. If you're super into it, I will let you, uh, you can just go ahead and pause, pause the video and, uh, and read those. Okay, the next component is the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so here's the nucleus. Actually, we'll do nucleus and endoplasmic reticulum at the same time. Here's the nucleus, and attached directly to the nucleus is the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is covered in ribosomes. And as I mentioned in the last lecture, ribosomes are what actually make the protein. Okay, so what's going to happen, and we're going to learn later on, is the nucleus is going to copy down instructions for proteins, and how convenient it's located right next to this endoplasmic reticulum, which has all of these ribosomes on it. The proteins that that DNA is, in the, is the instructions for is going to get made right here in the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, Inside the nucleus, we have the nucleolus, which has um, functions in creating ribosomes, but we will uh, we'll get to that later on. We also have all of this chromatin in here, and chromatin is just what your DNA looks like most of the time. You may have, you've probably heard the, the phrase uh, chromosome. That's not what this is. This is chromatin. Also have the nucleoplasm, which is just the area inside the nucleus, and we have these nuclear pores, which are openings where RNA can uh, leave the nucleus. Okay, endoplasmic reticulum, that's where protein is made. It is right next to the nucleus. The nucleolus, that is where ribosomes are made. Chromatin, that's unspooled DNA. Nucleoplasm is just the inside of the nucleus. Nuclear pore is where things can enter and exit the nucleus. And the nuclear envelope is another cell membrane that exists outside of the nucleus. Um, let's see. Well, let's also talk about the Golgi ap apparatus really fast. The Golgi apparatus is where proteins go to be modified. Um, and basically what happens very frequently is they'll go to the Golgi apparatus and maybe they'll have um, a tag added to them that says, hey, this protein is needed over in the lysosome or, or whatever it happens to be. And so the basic path of DNA is DNA is sort of exists as chromatin in the nucleus. And then it's copied into this RNA copy. And then that RNA copy goes to the endoplasmic reticulum where it's turned into a protein. And then that protein will then go to the Golgi apparatus where it is modified and made into something else. Sometimes it's tagged to leave the cell. Sometimes it's tagged to go somewhere else in the cell. Um, but yeah, that was a rambly way of saying that the Golgi apparatus is for modifying proteins. Uh, this is a, a picture of a cell and they're just trying to show you the lysosome here. Um, when you think lysosome, think like Lysol. Lysosomes are just to break down stuff that the cell doesn't really need anymore, or sometimes, in the case of this macrophage, stuff that the cell doesn't want. And you can see here, this macrophage has engulfed this bacterium, put the bacterium into a vesicle, 
fused that vesicle with the lysosome and then broken that back bacterium down. Okay, so the vesicle you should know is for breaking things down. But you can see the process I was just describing a minute ago. The nucleus makes RNA, which you know goes into the endoplasmic reticulum. Sometimes it just goes into the cell itself, but usually most of the time it goes in the endoplasmic reticulum. Then a protein is made, it's put into this transport vesicle, which is taken to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus modifies it by adding this little purple thing, whatever they're trying to represent there happens to be. And hey, that purple thing is the tag that says this protein's got to go outside the cell. And so this protein is bundled inside of a, a, what's called a vesicle. Okay, and vesicles are just things that allow um, objects to travel within a cell. This vesicle comes out here, fuses to the plasma membrane, and kind of just pops that protein back out. Okay, so this is the mitochondria. We'll talk about this organelle in the next video.